Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil War. Well, guys, it's no secret that Brian and I are huge supporters of indie film. Uh, you've heard us talk about independent film on the show. We've had many independent film creators on the show. And tonight we have with us the team working on the upcoming horror comedy, Dead Dawn. So welcome to the show, everybody. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go around the Zoom and just kind of let everybody uh, introduce themselves. I'm kind of just going in the order uh, that I see on my screen. So we'll kick it off with Mackenzie. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Mosey, and I'm playing Dawn. I'm also a producer on this project. Awesome. Aaron. Hey. Yeah, um, Aaron J. Rome. Everybody calls me AJ, but my socials are all Aaron J. Rome, so I'll just stick with Aaron. Uh, writer, director, and producer of said Dead Dawn. <laughs> all right, Isaiah. Hey, I'm Isaiah Laborde, and uh, producing Dead Dawn. And last but not least, Olivia. Hi, I'm Olivia Applegate, and I'm playing the cop Holcomb in this fun oh, film. Nice. Very nice. Very hey, nice. you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> I am indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, did you want to? Did we want to go around? Let everyone uh, kind of give them also some uh, some background, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if, if you guys don't mind, just kind of give us a little background of your kind of overview, quick overview of your career or whatever. Um, we'll go, go go in reverse order. How about you, Olivia? Uh -oh. oh, starting. Oh, right. maybe. We'll See, we'll shake it up a little right bit. There we go. Yeah. There we oh, go. Yeah. Um, well, this is a fun return to the horror genre for me. I actually, one of the first films I ever did was this film called Follow, which was a horror film uh, with Noah Segan, that actor. I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but crazy horror movie and I'm a corpse for half of it. Very fun. And um, I actually just did a, a horror Western for Paramount. It's called Organ Trail, like your organs. Oh, um, so that's oh, very exciting. Cool. And that comes out in May. So you guys can keep an eye out for that. It'll be in theaters actually. So you can oh, go see okay. it on a big screen. Yeah. So I, I'm, you meet my, oh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it's, it's very, <laughs> It's got some good horror elements in that one. Um, yeah, and so I got connected to this project through Aaron, AJ, um, because he and I were actually on a show together uh, called Love and Death, uh, which is a, a true crime. There's an ax murder in that show, so more gore. We're really nice. on theme here. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so that comes out April 27th. Um, on HBO Max, it's called Love and Death. And so that's sort of, those are sort of the recent related projects that I've been up to of late. Um, but yeah, I, my roots are in indie filmmaking. That's how I got started. I, I'm from Austin, Texas, and I'm sort of born and bred of the indie film community here. So I'm really excited to to make another film here. I think it'll be great. I have to say, Tim and I already are on board when you do a pun in the title. So the fact that it's Oregon Trail. Oregon or, Trail. Yeah, you're you're gonna, already I mean, right I'm, there. I'm telling y'all, you're going to love it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, horror western is like yeah. the coolest mashup to me horror so. western. Yeah. Yeah. i checked so many things off my bucket list making that movie you guys have no idea this is very fun that's <laughs> very awesome. nice yeah uh, okay how about you mckenzie so i was also connected to this project through aj we met in la um like filming auditions together is how we met and then just became good friends and I'm just a huge fan of his work. It's amazingly talented. Um, I started out as a kid in theater um, and and then like soap opera world and then moved into television and film and Broadway as I got older. Um, and I've been basically going back and forth between those last three worlds for my adult life. Um, I think the closest thing to a horror film that I've done would have been a a Manson movie, <laughs> um, <laughs> which which had some like, you know, slasher moments. Um, but I think this is definitely the first sort of true horror film that uh, I'm gonna be a part of. And I've also been leaning into the producer side of my career more recently out of an interest in uh, just getting stories out into the world that I believe in and I'm excited about and creating content. So yeah, that's me. 
Very nice. nice. I know Tim. Yeah. Tim's eyes widened with the uh, Manson thing. He's into. He loves yeah. the cult documentaries or cult yeah. movies or series. I love that like stuff. That. Yeah. So I got to play. So it was uh, Manson. The Manson story through Linda Kasabian's eyes, and I played Linda Kasabian. So that was a really cool experience. Um, and I met a lot of like some of my best friends I I still have from that film. So that was a really really great thing. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, how about you, Isaiah? That I'm listed as a writer, but AJ is the brain power and the, the the great writer and we've been for years i mean we've been best friends for a long time and got to work on not as many things as we uh should have by now so i'm super excited to be working together with aj on uh dead dawn but i've done a lot of uh pretty broad in the in the uh in in different types of genre but i've done a lot of horror and i love it um love making movies i started out as an actor stuntman whenever that when that did you know when i needed to pay some bills i I learned different parts of filmmaking and uh always said you know if i just i didn't want to plan b i wanted to make movies so if i could get on a film set doing pa whatever that could be i'd get on you know whatever movie i could so done done a lot of horror films uh uh you might be the killer um presence just was really i just uh distributed with xyz presence just came out have a few few films that are you'll, you'll hear about this year big shark they whisper half lives um and dead dawn by the end of the year heck yeah nice nice <laughs> all right aj your turn yeah um i god isaiah and i met in 2005 in la so it's been a long long time we connected right away and yeah, we've been trying to put put projects together for like our whole lives, it feels like. So it's really nice to be finally coming together and working on one. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've mainly been an actor in my career. I think most people would recognize me as that. But then I um, fell deeply in love with writing and directing and just having a little bit more control over what I was creating. And you get to tell the full story instead of just a little piece of the story and fell in love with that too. And so this is my second solo film. Uh, my first one being End Trip, which was t- released in 2019. So it's just been too long. We're just just pulling out all the stops and making this one happen. Well, there was that 2020 way. in between there. So yeah, well, yeah, which yeah is just a vortex of sorts. Yeah. So it's really <laughs> only been one year if you think about yeah. it. You know, you yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't count. Really, 2021 yeah. doesn't really count either yeah. when you yeah. go back. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 just a just about a head, few months ago. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah that <laughs> technically means I'm like 33. That's great. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I yeah we can also thing. track two years off our ages. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. We can even though, like, mentally, off. I think we all aged fifteen years. But yes, yeah, yeah. It's a, or yeah. went backwards because we just got dumb watching reality TV. <laughs> <True. as you're laughs> <me. laughs> so uh, that's great. That's exciting to hear about uh, everyone's background uh, and how they got to here. But uh, before we move into uh, the, the the movie at hand, uh, sorry, Isaiah, I have to single you out here for a second. I Get gotta him. find Get out. Him. And this is kind of Aaron. He suggested this in the in the but I, but we would have picked this up and asked right away. We got to know about Big Shark because uh-huh. we're big fan. And our friend, we have a friend Jeff Whitmire who's like a big uh, big horror fan, and he's a big fan of sh- anything shark movies and anything Tommy Wiseau. So, we, I, what kind of stories can you tell us on that? Uh, okay. Movie? Well, the good news uh, for everyone who's fans of of sharks or or Tommy um, both. <laughs> We are almost done, which is amazing, nice. um, which is a uh, just a huge, huge accomplishment. Uh, AJ. That's another testament to to Isaiah's producing <laughs> power, because had it not been left to Isaiah, this movie would have been shot for about six years and he got it done in less than six <laughs> months. So right. huge, yeah. feat, huge feat. Yeah. Another cool thing. So so if, if you know the room, you know, uh, yep. Greg and Tommy, and Greg called me today and uh, was sitting by the pool, had a conversation about another film that we're going to do later on because unfortunately we we shot a teaser for it a few years ago and for years and years i've been friends with tommy since they made the room and uh we're close friends as you all know he's from chalmette louisiana and uh <laughs> me from louisiana that's what that accent uh, is yeah, okay yeah <laughs> when, when he met me in the uh in uh the hollywood arc light gym uh years and years ago and invited me to the first screening at at uh limley theater uh in LA almost 20 years ago I guess wow 
<laughs> we, we've, we've been, and we talked about, and uh, I went on with my way, moved back to Louisiana. We have, you know, a great film industry in Louisiana, tax credits, everything else. So I, somehow I got in the sci-fi world. I've made uh, six shark films, trailer park shark, nightmare shark, ghost shark, swamp shark, atomic shark, um, <laughs> a lot of shark movies. And I love them. I, I, like I said, I love making movies. Um, I found what was enjoyable about making every project I get to work on. Who doesn't right. love a bit of camp? Yeah. Right. And 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 it's relationships that I love more than anything because you never know who you work with, what you get down the road, meet people. Uh it's 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 a fun thing. Long story short, uh somehow one way or another I wanted to I had one project after another and Tommy was like, "Hey, uh, I'll be there Monday. What are we shoot when you know, are we are we shooting?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, okay. All right, you're here. All right. I'll put a crew together." We start. We talked for years about this project, all three of us. So unfortunately, like I said, Greg is not um, involved in this one, but we are doing a movie because everyone's so excited and it will be released. We've already sold out a few theaters that are kind of test screening in Oregon and New York. And uh, um, we're. I'll be shooting in two days again for the last piece of finalizing the movie. Uh, Tim, Tim's you're you're from the south you're the south right yeah i'm the south yep all right North Carolina. Yep. I'm, I'm playing a character named tim oh okay. that's right it's very much, <laughs> very much from the south i'm a cowboy in the movie i got nice. me a, uh, i'll have to get you one we can wear it together sometime yeah. t t belt buckle uh cowboy belt buckle. we we sing it's uh it's not a musical but there's a lot of fun moments um <laughs> The shark looks amazing. The VFX is actually really fun. So anyway, I, I can't give too much, but it's very excited. I'm pretty never knew I'd be so excited about Big Shark, but uh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, for I just I, I think it's important important for everybody to know. I can't spoil anything. I know you know I've gotten to hear some stories, but just know that full you know Tommy Wiseau is in full Tommy effect. Yes, for the movie. If you're coming to see you know The Room Part Two, it's not going to not be that. Please tell me no. there's a line in it where he just goes, "Oh hi shark," right? Oh, he... Please, <laughs> it, it oh, doesn't happen. Shark. But I, it, oh. that does not happen. But I promise you, there's a million new lines that are going to be repeated. It's 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 everything you want in uh, it's everything you could want in in the movie for for you know it's been it's been a long time since he's made of something that's truly Tommy Wiseau and this movie is and and the first thing greg said today when i got on the call he was like well how's it going because he's been busy with a few of his things and he was like yep he said you you and i are probably the only ones that could finish a movie i'm proud of y'all you did it and uh <laughs> just being friends and honing it in and we we did it and it's uh it's there's some really fun things i mean he fights we burnt down an entire house we <laughs> we we are on river on boats doing crazy action sequences so it's you know tommy it, he's he's you know he's gonna live forever as we all know he's but, a vampire uh, yeah <laughs> that may be the next movie also just oh, nice. <laughs> but uh he did some amazing stuff he's game for anything we're in freezing cold water 17 degrees and he's out there with me and i'm like i'm I feel like I'm getting old and complaining and he's just doing it. So it's, it's pretty awesome that how passionate he is about making movies, just like any young person doing it the first time. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I I'm can't looking wait. Forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so AJ, I want to turn our attention to dead dawn. So tell us all about this movie. I've, I visited the campaign page today and I'm really intrigued. I want to hear all about it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Th thank you for having us on. Um, this is, you know, this is, um, it's hard to make movies. It's hard to put money together. It's hard to like every step of the way is a battle. You know, they're rewarding battles, especially when you win them. Um, so, so just for anybody that doesn't know yet, this, this project is in fundraising mode on a pro, uh, platform called WeFunder. So it's wefunder.com slash dead dawn. And this was basically built for, um, startups. So as opposed to going on a Kickstarter and Indiegogo or something and getting a t-shirt or a DVD, we get to actually offer investments. So you get an ROI on the movie as it makes money, which I think just probably sits a lot, little better with people. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a horror comedy. Um, 
small town think fargo meets Shaun of the dead um larger than life characters thick accents a uh, little bit ridiculous small town stuff but still grounded enough in reality that the stakes are there and when somebody dies you feel it and uh, so it basically follows the character annabeth she's this very unassuming quiet woman who accidentally murders her best friend and is left with the decision of either fessing up and going to jail forever and losing her one-year-old son or uh, hiding it and trying to live with the guilt. And the guilt is in the form of a persistently decaying dawn. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket, guilty conscience, <laughs> dead dawn. Nice. Who's kind of witness to Annabeth's every move throughout the movie? I like it. That's a, that's cool. It kind of reminds me almost a little bit of like the uh, the uh, American World in London, where their his friend kept coming back and like kind of almost making him feel guilty for what was going on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like oh, and I have to mention, there's a couple of detectives that are uh, cracking down on the case, and Olivia plays one of those. I was going to say, yeah, she was cheering you guys off for that, but you forgot to mention her character. I, then I there, totally you know? left her out. <laughs> totally <laughs> left her out. I'm hot on the chase. Yes. I'm hot on it. <laughs> so actually that, that leads perfectly into actually our next question uh, for Olivia and Mackenzie. So uh, tell us a bit about your roles and what drew you most to the project. Go ahead, Mackenzie. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. You, you don't know. Uh, yeah, Mackenzie can go <laughs> first and then we'll go. Sorry. Right, yeah, good for no, thanks. So I was originally drawn to it because of the script, just initially reading it. I knew I wanted to be a part of it in some capacity. Um, it's, scary and hilarious and thought-provoking and relatable and thrilling uh just I think the way it's written and the way the characters develop you really root for Annabeth as she's going down this path of trying to cover it up and the farther she goes down that path the deeper she digs herself into this hole and with Dawn as this sort of uh like haunting conscience it's just things start to unravel and for me as an actor it was just really fun to think about how to first I guess she's alive for maybe like 25 percent of the movie um and yeah yeah first act basically first then act. just this like <laughs> continually decaying version of herself that's a projection of Annabeth's insecurities and guilt and fear and doubts and so the opportunity as an actor to be able to play with those things and all the different scenes and sort of morph into those different categories and also get to work with some cool special effects and some crazy makeup. I mean, it's awesome. Right, and, yeah. and AJ and I have been wanting to work together for a while. I think he's an amazing director and actor and writer. Um, but this seems like a great opportunity um, to start that. And I couldn't, I couldn't wait to write something for Mackenzie to be able to play against her type. You know, she's, She's a literal Disney princess in, you know, a Disney movie. And uh, we get, oh, that's we right. get I to forgot. Into the Woods. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get to kill her. And uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of fun there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I love being able to play against that. I mean, it was a great experience, but um, just taking on roles that are challenging and that are not what people kind of expect to see when they see like blonde curly hair. I just, <laughs> I, I really find that rewarding. So what about you, Olivia? Yeah, so one of my favorite things to do is make films. Jay was saying is that so so much of filmmaking, unless well, so much of filmmaking in general can be really hard. It's like long days. Anytime a movie gets made, it's a miracle. And so doing it with people that you enjoy and respect and admire is like really high on my list of reasons to do a job. <laughs> so this definitely checked that box. And I just think that the the script AJ wrote is so, so good. And I actually, speaking of bucket lists again, it's always been on the bucket list of mine to do a type of buddy comedy. And I get to do like a buddy cop thing on this movie. And I just think it's so, it's so fun. And Holcomb is like so dry and so Southern. I'm just very excited. <laughs> um, I just think she's really funny to me. This character is so funny. And um, I always make the joke that I like die or cry in film and TV, and this is going to be really fun to get to like, you know, be funny and like solve a crime. So <laughs> this is a nice change of pace for me too. Um, so I, I'm, I, I'm very. I just want to jump in and say we've had a couple table reads of this and watching 
Olivia get into that character is just yeah. such a freaking joy, and she is nailing it every step of the way. It's, it's awesome. just really fun. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw in your notes too that you said it's a, it kind of goes against the tropes her character that what you usually get when you get a detective in that. So that that'll be interesting. See, was that any challenge to to do that or me or, or well, for, do you think it'll be any challenge when you? Like, well, I guess you got a little sample from the table read. Did you have a, like, did you have like any kind of inspiration specifically that kind of got you in that? Uh... For the heads? No, I mean, well, AJ gave like a pretty clear breakdown of this character. Like she's a townie cop and she, she knows this town really, really well. I mean, oh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but there's this like running joke that she's always like, we went to high school together and nobody like remembers her. <laughs> you know, it's just like, um, it's just like a little sad, but very sweet. <laughs> like, um, no, so I don't, I think like the, the thing, like I said earlier, I feel like AJ wrote such a beautiful script that, that the characters kind of lift off the page, you know, they're evident on the page, what you need to do for them as an actor. And that's, I think, an earmark of great writing because I read and I was like, oh, I see exactly what this is. Um, but sometimes you get scripts and you're like, this is murky. And it's, um, so it's really a testament to the writing. So, well, it just, yeah, I mean, Thank that, you. that's so important to character you know especially a movie like this which seems like it'll be so character driven it's it's you know it's oh, good yeah. when, when when the the the, the actors uh, feel that feel their character that it like like you said jumps off the page like that that's got to be re so much more rewarding yeah, yeah and the Fargo thing really stuck out to me because you know Fargo has so much heart all those characters have yeah. so much heart and these characters do as well you just are rooting for them like no matter what you're kind of rooting for them yeah so, yeah nice great script aj thank you thank you i need a needle to pop this giant really? head i'm growing <laughs> <laughs> well you guys did a perfect segue into my next question then because aj i was going to ask you about your influences for this film we've already mentioned fargo Shaun of the dead which are two fantastic movies yeah um and and, and brian and i love horror comedies yeah so i was kind of interested in kind of what some of your inspirations were when you were writing this yeah i mean Edgar Wright is a personal hero of mine. I think I've seen Shaun of the Dead more than just about any movie I've ever seen. Um, and just the way that every beat, every line, every moment has a true purpose and meaning and it's in the script and it's in the way that it's shot and it's in the way that the actors are, are you know, giving their performances. And so I really would love to, you know, my first film End Trip was shot in five days our production budget for that was $14,000. We, you know, spent more money in post, but <laughs> basically that consisted of 20 pages a day, um, which was improvised. It was completely improvised. We knew what the beats of the movie was going to be, but then it was kind of finding it in editing. And this movie is the exact opposite of that, where we're going the very... Um, prepared route in the beginning, storyboards and shot lists and the whole like to make sure that we get something... It's just very precise, and uh, I'm very excited to take a run at something like that because I just haven't I haven't had the resources or the ability to do it. And um, yeah, the team that's coming around it is just I feel so so fortunate to to be a part of it myself. But yeah, so to answer your question, Shaun of the Dead's huge. Um, I love Fargo. I love really anything Coen Brothers where they can bring a darkness and just slightly removed from reality, but where everything still feels familiar enough that you're not, you know, detached from the characters and the stakes. Um, and then we get pretty deep into some softy brothers, like really uncomfortable stuff later in this movie where Annabeth is starting to spin out of control and Dawn is really taking her toll. Um, so yeah, a lot of influences, a lot of influences. I'm a huge film guy. So to be able to flex those muscles is super exciting. Yeah, AJ is, he's encyclopedic, you guys. Encyclopedic. Okay. Not like you guys for horror though. Not not like you guys for horror. I was listening to one of your episodes today and I was just like, these guys are have yeah. some deep knowledge. Oh, thank you. I, thought, I went back and read Tell, Telltale Heart yesterday. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I totally didn't mention that one. That was a huge that was a huge influence because it's you know, that one's a little darker because he murders the guy on purpose, purpose and then just hides him out of the floorboards and then some cops come over and he's like, and he hears the wigging out about it. Yeah. <laughs> and this was like 
you know, I, my biggest influence was you watch horror movies and people kill other people and then never deal with any sort of trauma afterward. They just like, mm-hmm. like I remember watching the end of the like 2004 Texas Chainsaw Massacre and and they're just like, and then life goes on. And it's like, no, <laughs> that's not how this works. It's not happily ever after we avoided the killer. It's like you deal with stuff. And so I really wanted to explore what does it look like when an innocent person kills somebody? Because we, it's boring when somebody is a, a psychopath or sociopath and just doesn't feel anything for that. But what if it's somebody you're tru- truly rooting for to somehow get away with a murder, but watching them also have to deal with the trauma of it? And so that was the interesting thing for me. I like walking tight ropes. <laughs> There's a lot and, of them here. And that's got to be so hard because it seems like just based just for the brief uh, little bit we have, it seems like, you know, the Dawn character is very likable. So here you are, you're like not rooting against her, but you're rooting for her murderer at the same time. But it, so it's kind of I, I think that'll be a very interesting dynamic to, to witness when you do it, uh, when we see it on the screen. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. So is there, did you guys try like so I know I know in the script writing process, you know, things could change when you actually go to shoot, but like, you know, we Tim and I always say, um, and it seems like this has got multi levels. It's not so like a uh, horror comedy slash like right down the middle. Right. But um I know we always say, like, you know, like it's sometimes it might be hard to get that perfect balance on that. Have you have you had uh, struggled with that during the script? Or you kind of had your kind of had your ideas like and you're just like, this is what I'm going with and I had an initial feeling right off the bat when I started toying with the different elements of the script that I wanted to play with. And then they just sort of came together as I hoped they would. And I think it'll come through in how I plan on shooting it where the beginning will feel very tight and you're just kind of with Annabeth floating through her life because she doesn't really make decisions for herself to this moment where she, every second of every day is the most meaningful thing she's ever done. And so, um, yeah, I think blending a couple different film styles was just the natural thing to do. And, you know, I think uh, if we can do it right, it'll pay off. And uh, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but I'm super excited to take it on. It seems like you had the opposite of writer's block. <laughs> you just kind of went there and then, then out it flowed. Yeah, yeah. I wrote the whole cool. movie last year while my brand new son was sleeping next to me in his swing for like an hour or two every morning. I would just go, you know, crack away at it. And That's it, insane. It revealed itself to me. <laughs> so I'm excited. Right. And I think a lot of the comedy comes from the characters themselves because they're so well written. It's not like, here's a joke, but right. you believe in who these people are in this bizarre circumstance and that's where a lot of the comedy comes out of while still remaining in this sort of dark situation which i think is pretty brilliant it'll need some levity you know there i think there will be some like intense suspenseful moments and so those little you know little bits of levity here and there will just help break it up and let you off the ride for a second human ridiculousness yes yeah yeah (laughs) They're you all very earnest. Yeah, they're not telling jokes. They just actually believe this stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah you can't you can't have it too dark sometimes because if it's right. too dark, you know, it's just you need some sort of like even the darkest horror movies usually fit something in there, you know, that yeah. so yep. yeah, it's yeah. like here's this awful scenario. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go live with that. Cool. <laughs> cool. I'll never watch that movie again. I'm <laughs> huge. I've you know, growing up, I rewatched movies over and over and over again that had an impact on me. So that's the type of movie that I want to make as well. I want people to come back to it over and over, see something different every time or fall in love with a new character every time. So that's what we're out to do. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way. I watch a, a lot of things repeatedly, but it's funny. There's sometimes there's there's been a movie most recently where I watched it and I thought it was absolutely incredible movie, but it was so so like dark that I'm like, I don't think I could watch it again. Like, yeah, but I yeah. loved it. It was, uh, what is it? The Innocence, right? The Innocence. Innocence, yeah. Foreign yeah. Films really I don't know if you saw that. That one's no, a very, very one. dark. I mean, like to the point of where there's really no levity in it at all. And it's like, it's still stuck with me to the point where I'm like, I love that movie, but I don't think I could watch it again ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Darren Aronofsky for me. Like I just, yeah. I see his brilliance. He's an auteur. He's one of the most talented guys working, but 
I don't really want to watch Requiem for a Dream again. Yeah, that, <laughs> no, I think I've seen it like three times at this point. That that's a tough wrestler I can watch over and over again. But that that was yeah. yeah, Requiem for a Dream is tough. Yeah, that's um, a, um, Brian, I'm gonna let you take. I'm gonna let you ask the uh, fun one because I'm gonna fold the the other one into the last question. Okay, yeah, it sounds good. Okay, all right, so I get the fun one. You get the uh, fun one. Brian gets the fun one. <laughs> so this one's for everyone. Uh, we can take turns. Uh, we haven't done this question in a while. It used to be one of our signature questions, but. Uh, this I think it's good good time to bring it back. So if you can exist in any, uh, you could star in any existing horror franchise. What would it be and why? So if we'll start. I'll start on my uh, order. So we'll go to Aaron first. God, franchise. Um, does Stranger Things count? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, and anything basically with multiple. Yeah, I mean, uh, Stranger Things, just the world that the um, the brothers, oh my God, lost their names. Oh, Duffer? Duffer Brothers, thank you. Yeah, the world that they built, it just, it, it, there's elements of that in Dead Dawn as well, where it's just, it seems like a fun place to be in general, just like life is interesting, nothing's boring, the people are great, the scenarios are, you know, crazy, but even the kids seem like they're halfway happy to be dealing with yeah. these insane things. Yeah. I think if I could live in any, in any horror world, it would be just stranger things world. That's a great one. Okay. I'd say uh, you got to top that. That's a tough one to top. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough, it's a good, good question. Tough question. Um, ah, Man, I, I like so much the first couple of saws that the suspense and, and, and things early on at, that's just the first thing I go to. Uh, for a franchise saw um yeah man you're putting yourself you're you're not giving yourself very good odds of living as the star of that yeah. franchise <laughs> yeah no, no but um <laughs> <laughs> if living's important yeah, i wasn't know. i wasn't talking about being a star because it yeah you, you you're you're gone or you know pretty pretty much right away i just i guess because i think more yeah, I wasn't thinking about the question enough. I I, I suck. <laughs> Maybe no, he's he a guy on the tricycle. Just, I was you, thinking of, of of the build and the development of it. Um, and you I just actually, go out in style. I, he's he's gonna, gonna, gonna be the one designing the traps. He's yeah, that's what I was gonna trap. say. Yeah, oh, he's the producer yeah. of Saw. He's the star yeah. behind the camera. Yeah. Yeah, and we talked about this. Uh, AJ, we just talked about this yesterday. That I don't know. Is I I don't feel like there's. I think people are being so creative with the horror genre, and and it's mixed, and it it brings in other things like suspense, thrill, different elements. Uh, with people being so creative that that the the movies are so good individually that there aren't as many franchises, and and that, that's cool in its own sense. But you know, for the ones that can make it these days, more power to it. Uh, uh. You know, it's but I'm cool with making one ama one amazing movie that people enjoy and want to watch over and over. Uh, but yeah, that's just because they haven't offered you that franchise money yet. <laughs> That'll change oh, your I'll, mind. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Dead Dawn two comes, it'll become yeah, a franchise. Dead Dawn the TV show right or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll work. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, Mackenzie, you're up next. Um, what about this? So the movies that scared me the most or the movie that scared me the most as a kid was it, but that's not, do we consider that to be a franchise? Yeah. They remade it. Yeah. Well, you know what? Sure. They, yeah. Because they're coming out with the TV show. And I'd have to be okay, a so. young you boy, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have um, a very cliche fear of clowns and mimes and dolls and anything with that kind of like face situation and so i feel like it would be a good opportunity for me to um face that fear or just not have to act at all well it's, it's yeah, tim has an unusual fear i wonder which is better cliche fear or tim's irrational fear of shelly winters so i don't know <laughs> yeah. if uh... i saw pete's dragon when i was younger and it really <laughs> scarred me for life yeah <laughs> oh it's, a, it's a running joke we have i, I just send him like pictures of shelly winters in different like things doing things like i had one i put him her in the game of thrones and i said winters is coming and sent it to him so it's like you know oh i like, my to, God, like to torment good. him so <laughs> that's brilliant. so yeah sometimes a cliche fear is much better but much it's easier. where I, I showered with a oversized bottle of shampoo on my drain um when i was like up until i was at least 19 years old because every time i closed my eyes to shampoo my hair I would just I would just think about that scene where the you know the clown comes out of the drain and I, I figured that if 
something happened and something happened to be in my drain that it would knock over the bottle and I would hear that and I could I don't know you're, you're, yeah. I that's vital girl material it's just like how how you know <laughs> ghosts can't move through comforters yeah yeah <laughs> you know exactly. as soon as you've got the blankets yeah. over your head like nothing can hurt yeah. you it's the same it thing just shampoo bottle. bottles <laughs> <laughs> you have to see Mac Mackenzie's going for the final girl like trope. Yeah, That's she she's already surviving the horror movie in, in the yeah. <laughs> But if it makes you feel better, I did the same thing after seeing the Salem's Lot, the TV movie, when I was way too young probably to see it. I would I could not sleep in a bedroom. Like if it was mine didn't have this, but if I was a, a you know, we were at a relative's house or a guest room, I could not sleep with anything with big windows in front of the bed like where the i don't know if you guys saw sales oh. a lot but where the vampire comes in and he knocks most still my most traumatizing scene in a horror movie out of all the obviously doing a horror podcast watch out this movie still to this day that is the the thing that creeps me out the most uh, that should be scenes, one so. of your questions if it isn't already what's your most like traumatic oh, what was shit. that one scene from a horror movie that traumatized you should do. we should put that in the rotation tim yeah definitely yeah good question uh, mine would be one. pete's dragon yep pete's dragon, <laughs> not a horror so, movie yeah but it, it connects be, uh, mckenzie for the at. disney the whole thing so it's still yeah. on brand for the this <laughs> zoom uh <laughs> Okay, Olivia, you're finishing us off here. Oh, gosh. Okay, wait. So I, I have to ask a clarifying question. Is yes. this, like, as an actor, I want to be in this? Or is this, like, as a human being, I want to live in the world of this franchise? I, I think it's more of, like, a yeah, acting, but... Acting. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Like, you can do both if you them. want. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, as a human, none okay. of them. Um, well, um, I've always... I've been racking up some like cool deaths in movies. So I feel like maybe like a final destination moment with like a oh, cool, yeah. cool death. Um, one of my friends was in one of those. She was like the gymnast who like breaks. Oh, I can't watch that scene. Oh, oh that yeah, like, that's, yeah. That's a great it's scene. It's so creepy. But yeah. ever since I watched her death sequence in that, I was like, I want a cool death scene like that in, the, nice. in a movie. So I don't know that I maybe a final destination moment, something like that. Final destination has some of the best kills of it. Right? Yeah. Insane. Yeah. It just would be kind of cool to be like, yeah, that happened. Yeah. In, in fake movie worlds, I did that. Although, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. The, anyway, I was on the spot. I'm stealing. I'm stealing Olivia's answer. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> My background with the with the, with the uh, just doing stunts and crazy kid. Like that that one. That one's a lot of fun. It's and, kind uh, of fun, right? Because I, yeah, I mean, yeah. like as an actor, it's like one of the weird things you get to do is like Heck yeah. have crazy death scenes. Like one time, I was a vampire in this movie, and I get killed by getting like impaled to the front of a Mack truck and then like driven through this like forest and like like anyway and that's just cool like that's when incredible. you ever get to die like that <laughs> you don't have to justify it you're on our, a horror podcast you can right right right, right. Oh, that's, 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 we're, that's, we're your people you know we're like, that feels that that <laughs> feels like place. Disney World to me I love it right? yeah. there's something very <laughs> compelling about it yeah <laughs> speaking of Disney World you should watch that that what was that search for tomorrow the Disney the horror movie that was like that is a good friend of mine, the lead character. In really? That, right? oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. a weird movie. Yeah, that was weird. I love that movie, though. That was, yep. It just rem it reminded me when he said it's Disney World. I'm like, well, speaking of that, I have to. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you want to watch the show. Called? I'd be happy to line oh, up. Oh, yeah. We Escape actually, from Tomorrowland. Be... Oh, yeah, that would yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah. that would be awesome. Do you guys consider The Last of Us horror, or is that like Absolutely. post-apocalyptic? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. Post-apocalyptic horror, yeah. Yeah, I love that show so far. I'm a little behind, but uh, we've been so busy with stuff. But that 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 show is just absolute brilliance. I think. Yeah, the beginning especially was like I yeah, yeah it was awesome. I think I think I don't know if I don't think we finished it either. I'm not sure how many more episodes there are. I think there's um, nine total for the first season. If I'm okay, correct. so maybe and maybe I think I... tomorrow's episode eight, right? Yeah, I think it is episode eight's this week. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> so behind because we, we Tim and I were trying to binge watch all these movies for the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. So okay, which, oh yeah, which yep. we'll be rooting for you for when this is done for you guys all to make that, of course. So. Hey, thanks. Heck yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Your lips to whoever's ears. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So to wrap things up, I, I want to give uh, our listeners um, all the information they need to to find out more about the film, about the WeFunder campaign. Um, tell us a little bit about, I know we we talked a little bit about the, uh, the WeFunder website. Kind of give us a little more insight to that because I want everybody listening to to go out and support you guys. 
Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. So it's wefunder.com slash dead Don. Super easy. Also, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Aaron J. Rome, spelled out J A Y. Um, I, I'll hop on, talk to whoever. You know, this is investments from $100 to $100,000. So people can come in at any level. And there's perks that are, um, you know, equivalent to the investment. So you can be an executive producer on this movie. You can come to all the premieres with us. Um, you can even have your production company title card at the front of the movie if, you know, if the investment is right. So, yeah, we really want to be able to share this with people. And and I think it's a cool way for people to get behind a project and, and a bunch of people pushing a, a movie up a hill instead of, you know, oh, I heard about this movie that came out at this festival. I can't wait for it to come out. And then, you know, it does and everybody loses track of it. Um, the nice thing about WeFunder is it's a nice transparent website that everybody can see the exact same details. There's no shady business going on. It's heavily regulated by the SEC and your money's safe there, probably safer than handing it to a random producer. So, yeah, and really accessible too. I just feel like the website's really well done and it's easy to understand all of the different points per investment sort of level. I think it's, it's pretty pretty simple and yeah great yeah oh and I, I guess it's worth mentioning right now i don't know when this uh when you guys plan on airing this one but the actual campaign launches on the 8th and uh anybody that gets in in the first i don't isaiah do you remember if it's 100 or 150 thousand i think that, we said the first hundred thousand gets an additional uh five percent return on interest and and so it's kind of an early bird special and uh, I think you already said this, but unlike Kickstarter, this is something where your money's tied directly to the profitability of this film. So you're, whether you're at the $100 level or, or any level, and this is the first time that I do this myself in, in raising uh, money this way, but the, it's, it's completely credible. I did my research and the research, and it's it's exciting to have a whole bunch of people, and hopefully we get to meet everybody as we show this movie and go to festivals and uh, get to meet everybody involved. Some people, you know, maybe you get your toes wet in being a part of making a movie and uh, it is the coolest thing you uh, yeah. You get to be a part of the glam glamorous part of it and uh, <laughs> the not all side, of it is yeah. as glamorous as it seems, but we, we, we like to get our hands dirty too and uh, get it done. So we're all very, very excited about this one and hope that as many of you want to join us as possible. Yeah, I like you. that this that we fought it that, that, that you mentioned that it's not just like these these random perks like things you're at there like it probably really does make actual, someone actual dollars. Yeah, yeah, but you feel like you're part of film like yeah. you especially because I like to I like to contribute to any you know as many indie projects as I can and so it's like every you know every one that I do it's like it's you know I feel part of it but like this is cool because this is like you're really part of this like you're yeah. you're in you're there you know this happened yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, wouldn't it's happen really without you. And then we get to actually pay you back for it. And we're going to do cool things like have behind the scenes stuff. We'd, I'd love to have a, a whole documentary that gets released on the, you know, special edition Blu-rays. Uh, same with commentary contract, uh, uh, soundtracks and all that stuff where it's like, I really want to pack this with as much thank you as possible to to really bring that audience along with us. Well, Tim and I have a dream of we really see these. We do a monthly show. I don't know if you saw it called the Disc Memorment, where we go through all the Blu-rays and we always see other podcasts like on these Blu-rays, and we'll be like, "That's our dream. We need to be one of those special features someday." So, what does that get? What do we have to chalk up to get? No, <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll we'll put a special perk on, on there for you. Yeah, but like the the the, the podcast perk, you know, if you yeah. podcast donate so much money, you get to come. No, I'm just I'm just totally. We're, yes. No, we we will. Oh. Um, we will definitely like you guys do the do, do, do the minimum or a little bit more and we, we you, you're on <laughs> yeah absolutely well we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have your podcast listed on the WeFunder page as well as just a huge thank you so anybody coming through can hopefully click right on a link or at least see the name of your podcast and come and find you guys too nice, nice oh, to that's get... amazing yeah and i i if you haven't been able to tell yet i'm, I'm a bit of a talker so uh... <laughs> I'm going to use my big New York you. mouth to make sure that everybody knows here that, uh, you know, anyone I could will listen about this, uh, not only the, the WeFundMe, but the movie itself. So even if, you know, maybe they're not financially 
uh, able to contribute, they'll contribute in box office dollars when it comes out. So yeah, absolutely. And anybody interested, I'd love to send you guys just some promo images. You know, an I supported Dead Dawn on WeFunder thing for your Instagram or your Twitter, because really just getting the logo out there, you know, getting people to understand that they can be a part of this is just as helpful as everybody's you know, hundred dollar con- contribution. Obviously the money matters. Don't just, you know, <laughs> spread the image, but <laughs> yeah, well, keep it, keep us up to date too. Cause just keep setting it. We'll just Boy, keep better. sharing it and help promoting it. You know, just, just because we love, thank you guys. We are so behind indie film because we know that's, you know, that's, you know, you guys have to try even harder because, you know, you don't have this big studio funding. And usually I find that I watch an indie film five times more than I would a big studio film anyway. So you know, it's just, it's great that, uh, you know, cause I just, I think we just, Tim and I both agree. We just love the passion behind the, the teams that make these, these independent films. So, well, we appreciate you, all yeah, of us indie you. filmmakers out there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. This has been great. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you are, you guys are welcome are awesome. anytime. Anytime you guys got a project, just say the word individually as a team, whatever you guys need, but we're, we're always willing yeah, to, uh, be happy to help, help promote. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Y'all are great. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.